namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodasa. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> Today we start seven thirty, then we will stop at uh, nine fifty. Yeah. So last week we talk about the concept of purity in Buddhism and other religions, right? So actually in Buddhism it's quite clear that uh, the purity, the purity uh, we decide depends on uh, bodily purity, mind, uh, Baba and Mente, depend on our contact, right? So we, today we will continue with that concept so using uh, using one soda <coughs> Chonda soda from Angotra Nikaya uh, chapter ten soda number one seven six right Chonda soda chapter ten uh, soda number one seven six Page number one five one eight, right? So this order was a sent uh, one week before. One week before. Chonda hmm? soda. <coughs> the nine give name the ritual purity, right? Chonda is the one who offer the last meal to the Buddha. So as you. Many of you know that uh, Chonda is a goldsmith, the one who offered the last meat to the Buddha. Actually, this, this soda is uh, taught earlier, not that time, right? So, uh, Chonda is a blacksmith, goldsmith, sorry, goldsmith, right? Goldsmith, uh, he had a chance to offer the last meat to the Buddha. So, what is. Uh, the ingredients of the less me, the food of the less me, pig, uh, pork, right? Pork curry, pork curry. In Bali, it is called sugra madwa. Sugra madwa, a very tender pork, right? A very tender pork. Uh, actually, not only the pork. So at the time, you know that the Buddha is very weak, right? So the Buddha is going to uh, uh, just one day, uh, just a few hours uh, before he passes away, right? So the Buddha is very weak. For that reason, the goldsmith Chonda, he uh, arranged a pork curry, adding a lot of medicinal food, medicinal ingredients, right? For that reason, uh, after eating that food, uh, the Buddha became very energetic. Then he can proceed to Kusi, uh, Kusinara, Kusinagara, right? Where he finally passes away. But as you all know that uh, the Buddha, uh, on the way, the Buddha uh, where he was he had a diarrhea, right? A diarrhea. So many people said that because of pork curry. <laughs> the Buddha had a diarrhea. For that reason, uh, the Buddha taught to Ananda. Uh, so the Buddha said to Venerable Ananda, Ananda taught to Chonda, a blacksmith. Uh, the Buddha passes away not because of pork curry, but because it is the time, right, to possess away. And the Buddha said that uh, the food that was offered by, uh, offered by Sujata, 
the first food, right? After Buddha became uh, attained enlightenment, he received the food from Sujada, the lady, right? So that is it, the first food. And the last food offered by um, uh, uh, Gosmit Chonda, they have equal benefit, right? Because uh, the Chonda may think that because of Bokhari, the Buddha died, right? He may have a remorse and regret. So the Buddha knew that for that reason. So the Buddha taught to Venerable Ananda. So you have to talk to Chonda that uh, uh, the first food and the last food, so they have an equal benefit, right? Equal benefit. I think it's very interesting. I think you can read uh, Mahabharata Soda, Digani Kaya Soda number 16. So if you want to know a long journey, or uh, the Buddha before he passes away, right? Very interesting, very interesting. <clears throat> you can read it. And some people say that Sugra Madhava is not a pork curry. It is a mushroom, right? Mushroom, some people say that. And some people say that not, not a mushroom, not a pork curry. It is a bamboo shoot curry. <laughs> <laughs> so actually there are many uh, Many interpretation, right? Interpretation. But according to commentaries, the commentary of Mahabhinibana Soda, it is a, a tender pork curry. So the Gosme Soda added uh, some of the medic uh, medicinal ingredients, right? So for that reason, after Buddha eating that food, the Buddha told him to, uh, to throw away. So the reason is, other people, other men cannot take it. After taking that curry, so they will have a uh, food poison, right? Food poison. So here, Chona is the one who offer the last meal to the Buddha, right? To the Buddha. So in this soda, we can learn some of the Silabra Brahma practices. Silabra Brahmasa is a Pali term. Pali term. Silabra Brahmasa. Because the reason I use the word Pali is very significant. So Silabra Brahmasa means adherence to rites and rituals as a means to purity and liberation. Some people, as we have learned that, uh, um, <clears throat> So some Brahmin, they believe that by immersing themselves in the water, so they can purify from their sin, right? From their evil deed. So actually that is called Silabra Brahmasa. So adherence to rites and rituals. And some people translate adherence to uh, rites and ceremonies. Actually, the including ceremony, we have a lot of ceremonies in Buddhism and a lot of ceremonies in other religions as well, right? So if you, if you think that those ceremonies will purify your evil deed, that is also considered as a Silabra Brahmasa, right? It's very white, very white. Then I hope that after learning uh, this soda, so you we understand, you have a better understanding about rice and rituals, right? Rice and rituals. <clears throat> so that is called Silabra Brahmasa. So as we all know that uh, only after we become Sotapanna, we will be able to remove those uh, rice and rituals, right? But before we become Sotapanna, we still have uh, attachment and we still have a clinging to what ro ro those rites and rituals. And then as a Chinese, you have a lot of rites and rituals, more rituals, right? More rituals. Because we cling to that. We cling to that, right? So that's called rites and rituals. But actually, um, so 
Some of the rising rituals are very meaningful, right? Very meaningful. So it's no harm, no harm, right? But if you believe that by doing those rising rituals, by performing the ceremonies, so uh, you will drive, drive away all your evil deeds. So if you believe in, uh, if you believe so, so that we can celebra brahmasa, right? Celebra brahmasa. Some people misinterpret sila here as a morality, moral conduct. It's not so. Sila me habit, right? So habit and practices. What are me? Uh, actually, sila and vata actually they have similar meanings. So uh, habits and practices, by doing so, uh, just like a, uh, immersing into the water, right? So that is called rising rituals. So in this soda, so we can learn some of the rising rituals, so which we are prevalent in ancient India, right? Ancient India. Not only ancient India, even right now, right? Even right now, such as tending the sacred fire. Tending the sacred fire. Actually, we have learned last week, Sonarika Bararaja, he tend the fire uh, to pay respect or pay, to pay respect to the God, right? To the God. So they use the fire as a million by putting some of the food and some of the ingredients into the fire. They believe that. They believe that. So uh, the God will receive their offering. You know, uh, the fire go upward, right? By putting some of the ingredients, just like a rice, geese, Better, etc. Right, and some of the uh, um, from the food by putting them, and the fire will bring those staff to the god. So in this way, uh, they pay respect to their god by offering those when with the medium of fire. They will receive blessing, right? If they will receive. Uh, purity of their soul, right? Their soul. So that is a, the purpose of tending the sacred fire. Actually, this practice is stay, uh, stay practicing in even uh, modern day India, right? So now if, you, if you Google tending the sacred fire, you will see there a lot of pictures, right? A lot of pictures. So these are called the rites and rituals. So if we learn uh, uh, Sonarika Bhara Raja Soda, and the Buddha said that, tending the fire, the fire come from the wood. Nothing, nothing else, right? Fire come from the wood. So those fire when, uh, are not, how to say, uh, will not make you free from uh, evil deed or sins, right? So. Uh, so we, can, we have land uh, in the Sonarika Soda, right? So tending the sacred fire, this is one of the rites and rituals. Worshipping to the sand, right? This is also one of the uh, rituals. By worshipping to the sand, some people believe that. Uh, by worshipping the god of the sand, right? Sand god, they will receive blessing, right? So they will receive blessing. It's also considered rice and riches. And immersing oneself in water three times a day, right? This is a very popular, right? We have learned that uh, the, they believe that the water represents purity, right? So not only immersing ourselves in the water, but also any form of belief, right? By receiving, um, if you believe that, so that way, uh, that way, uh, the water will purify your ebedit. If you believe so, that we can rise in rituals, right? So these are some of the rituals 
So that we can find in the Chona soda, right? Chona soda. So in this soda, the Bodak mainly talk about 10 causes of karma. 10 causes of karma. Actually, this chapter, uh, this chapter talk about 10 causes of karma, right? So when you look at next soda, uh, soda number 177, so uh, this is a Janosoni soda that we have already learned, right? That we have already learned. So if somebody do 10 causes of house and deed, then they can be reborn in hair, animal ram, and uh, uh, the apple top applied spirits, right? So this order also mainly talk about 10 causes of karma. In Pali, it is called karma pata. I think it's very important. So you have to, you should remember the word 10 causes of karma. So karma me, our action, pata me, the cause or the path, right? So the cause of unwholesome karma are called akusala karma pata. Akusala karma pata. And the cause of wholesome karma are called kusala karma pata. Kusala karma pata. So uh, in this soda, the Buddha will talk about wholesome and unwholesome. So here we have a karma, right? So by studying this soda, you will understand about the theory of karma as well, right? Karma as well. So in this soda, the Buddha explained that only those causes of karma will make you pure or impure, right? So there is nothing else that make you pure or impure. So after reading this soda, and you will understand how you can purify yourself uh, according to Bodhisattva, and how you can define yourself according to Bodhisattva, right? So purity and impurity. So we can learn this soda. Actually, the reason why I choose this soda is very important. So in this soda, we can learn Hosan and Hosan Kama, right? And also, uh, what is the concept of purity in Buddhism? That's very important. Before we explain further, so we need to know 10 causes of Aosan Kama, right? 10 causes of Aosan Kama. Actually, it is not news. You already know it. Three bodily actions, right? So we have a three bodily actions. Destroying life, right? Or killing. Panadipada. Number two, taking what is not given. Adenadana. Number three, engaging in sexual misconduct. So these, these three are called three bodily actions. In Pali, Gaya Kama, right? Gaya Kama. So these actions have to be done with your body, right? With your body. So for that reason, it is called bodily actions. The number two, four, Vave actions. Number one, speaking falsehood. Telling line, right? Telling line. Musavara. Number two, speaking divisively. Using divisive speeches, right? Pisunavasa. Number two, number three, speaking harshly. You use unpleasant speeches, right? Pusavacha. Number four, indulging in idle chatter. You're talking fruitless speeches and beneficial speeches, right? So these are called four vave actions. Because generally, you use your vave speeches 
by committing these uh, unwholesome actions, right? Four verbal actions. I think you have to know before we learn further, right? Later on, we will clarify one by one. And number three, three mental actions. Three mental actions. Manokama. Number one, having full of longing. You have a lot of longing, right? And number two, having a lot of away, right? Yapara. And number, number three, holding a wrong view. Holding a wrong view. So these three are called mental actions because it's connected with the mind, right? Connected with the mind. So all together, so they are called ten causes of unwholesome actions. Three bodily actions, and four verbal actions, and three mental actions. Altogether, these are called ten causes of unwholesome gamma. I think you can read the soda, in the soda, right? In detail. Now let's talk about impurity in Buddhism. What is impurity in Buddhism? So I will quote what the Buddha taught in the soda, right? What the Buddha taught in the soda. So in the soda, uh, I think, um, <clears throat> as you all know, that in the soda, uh, the Buddha asked uh, the Gosmi Chonda, which type of purity you prefer, right? Which type of purity uh, purity you prefer? Then Gosmi Chonda said that. Uh, I prefer uh, the purity, uh, the teachings, or the purity taught by the Brahmin who are living in the West West region, right? West region. So those Brahmins, if you learn the soda, you will understand um, the Brahmins of the West. So they carry around water pot, right? They will carry water pot. And wear garlands or water plants. I think if you visit India, you will see some of the Brahmins, right? They wear the garland, even up to now. And also, they tend the sacred fire and they immerse themselves in water, right? In water. So the Gosmit Brahmin said that. He prefer those uh, teachings of those Brahmins. They normally teach how to beautify yourself, right? How to beautify yourself. So they suggested that early in the morning, if you get up, and you should stroke the ground from your back, <laughs> right? So this is the rice and riches. I think there are many, many uh, rites and rituals or many beliefs or practices even nowadays we follow, right? Can you tell me uh, what are the rites and rituals that you believe? Currently we are believing. What is it? I mean just, oh, just one or two. Maybe. So what are the rites and rituals? Nobody. <laughs> burn, burn, uh, burn house uh, for the death. Burning houses. Paper houses. Paper houses and many. Yeah, planes, or planes, even car, the car, car. handful, <laughs> TV, right? So that those are considered rice and rages, right? And then later, when we land another soda, it will be quite clear, right? So and then, uh, uh, I say, tower, tower. Ta Tau, right? Taos. They believe that by burning paper, uh, by burning uh, many paper, and by burning the car, uh, the, 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 the receipt, uh, how do you say it? The deceive, what, we receive those many and car, etc. Right? So those are considered as the rights and riches. And any others? Okay, I... 
Sorry? Oh, offering food to the uh, to the deceived, right? But of course, uh, as we have learned earlier, if we look at from the Tirabwara point of view, so that is not advisable, right? But when we look at it comes from your mind, right? So you're offering food to, to the departed people, for the departed people. And then, um, yes, according to Tirabwara, we can say so. There's a Buddhist Sorry? where they believe to release the live animals. Oh, to release live animals. Uh, fish. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, I think that it is a, depends on conditions, right? Depends on conditions. Some people are trying to exploit that business, right? They say the fishes and other birds and other animals, right? And people buying it and they relieve. So the businessman they will catch again. <laughs> like this. It depends on conditions, right? But uh, when you are going somewhere and you see that one of the animals is catch in the cage, right? Then you relieve. So it's considered as a good deed. But uh, it depends, right? So if we are if we are doing for the sake of business man, I think it may not be advisable, right? Okay, okay. Sorry? Or rituals and funerals. Yeah. Rituals and funerals, because you know sometimes you see that when the person is alive, nobody really cared much about the person. But once the person, you know, passes away, there's a lot of celebration and then, you know, musicians and and banners and I don't know. <laughs> a lot of flowers. And lots of monks coming <laughs> and priests. So what do you think about these funeral rituals? I think it's a very good question. Uh, let me come back later. So when we learn the soda, prayer, right? So earlier, one week earlier, I gave you uh, the, name of, the name of the soda, a sea pandaka boda soda, uh, under the name of prayer. So if we learn that soda, I will come back to your, que uh, your questions. I think it's very meaningful. So I want to express my, my opinion as well, right? Very important. So here, I just want to uh, just mention some of the rites and rituals followed by the Brahmins of the, uh, Brahmins of the West region, right? Before you get up, uh, why, when you get up, and you have to stroke the ground, right? But it will bring you a good lack of blessing like this, right? If you do not do that, and you stop, what count down? <laughs> like this. If you don't want to do that, and you stop, green grass, right? Green grass. But if you, want to, if you don't want to do that, and you tend the sacred fire. And also, you can pay homage to the same with the reverential salutation. And also, you can immerse yourself in water three times, including evening, right? Including evening. So it is in this way that the Brahmins of the West prescribe their rights in purity, their rights of purity, right? So if you follow those rights and rituals, you are purified. So all you are evil did, uh, accumulated days and night, right? So they will be purified. So as, as I earlier said that, uh, there are many, uh, almost every religion, they follow rites and rituals, including Tirabhara Buddhism, right? Tirabhara Buddhism, even Tirabhara Buddhism. For that reason, uh, I always said that uh, uh, we are very lucky that uh, in this temple, we have very less rites and rituals. So we just focus on our uh, learning, right? Learning the causes, learning uh, teachings of the Buddha. We're very lucky, right? As I earlier said that even the uh, blessing with the water can be considered as the rites and rituals. Sila Brahmasa, right? So actually I share uh, uh, two weeks ago um, one of the uh, one of the kinds, one of the uh, young wines, 
came to our tembe <coughs> together with his father. And his father said that, uh, Bandi, can you bless my son? Because uh, he is a, uh, taking interview tomorrow <laughs> to get a job. <laughs> to get a job. Of course, no reason, we have to bless. Uh, after blessing that guy, I told him, if you go to interview, smile. <laughs> so actually here, if you think that you got a job because of blessing, it is wrong. It is wrong. You got a job because of your contact. You are scared, right? You are scared, your behavior, moral behavior. So uh, some of the guests and wine, uh, Burmese guests and wine came to Tampa. And also they do a lot of good things in the Tampa, changing the flower and cleaning the Tampa. And I told them, pay home to the border and make a wish to get a job. Then after they get a job, I told them, you got a job not because of paying home to the border, but because of your action. But because of you are ashins, right? That's very important. So when you look at the story, uh, how do you say that? The story of uh, sons and uh, father, right? If he got a job, not because of blessing, but of course it will be the, the blessing will be a part of a uh, supporting factor, right? So by receiving blessing, he will have a, uh, how do you say that? His mind will be motivated, right? So without any skills in a particular in a particular field, he will not get a job, right? However, he receive blessings, will not get a job, right? So I think here it's very important to understand. So we are not telling that blessing is not good. We trying to differentiate between uh, between rights and rituals and contact, right? Silas Mari Panya, okay? So here, so I'm going to quote uh, teachings of the Buddha. Uh, then uh, the Gosmit Chona said that I follow those the rites of purity or ritual purity to purify my soul, right? To purify my, my evil deed. And the Buddha said that uh, what we believe is different from what you believe. Actually, the Buddha said that um, Chonda, purification in the noblest one's discipline is a quite different from the rites of purity prescribed by the Brahmins of the West. And the Buddha said that Chonda, uh, we have a three type of impurity by body and four type of impurity by speech and uh, three type of impurity by mind, right? And the Buddha said that. So I will quote that, uh, what, the Buddha, what the Buddha said, right? And the Buddha talked about what are the uh, ten type of bodily impurity and four type of verbal impurity and, uh, and three type of mental impurity. So that, that we have already learned. So those are ten causes of unwholesome deed, right? Ten causes of unwholesome deed. So that means if you are doing uh, ten causes of unwholesome deed, you are impure, right? You are impure. But here, so what is impurity in Buddhism? The, the Buddha said that these chonda are ten causes of unwholesome karma, right? So we have already learned. If one engage in in those in these ten causes of unwholesome action, if someone is doing ten causes of unwholesome action, then if one taint the secret fire, one is impure. And if one doesn't taint the secret fire, one is impure. Whether you taint the fire or not, you are impure. Whether you come to, uh, after doing 10 type of hours and deed, then you come to Tempe and you see blessing. 
you are unwholesome deed are not purified, right? According to this order. But here, uh, whether you are tending the fire or not, you are stay impure. Whether you pay homage to the sand or not, you are stay impure. Whether you immerse, immerse yourself in water three times a day, you are stay impure, right? The reason is, the Buddha said that, for what reason? Because these ten causes of unwholesome karma are themselves impure and defiling. Right? However, you dive into the water, you are not impure. You are not pure, right? The reason is those animals and gamma themselves are impure. It is because people engage in these ten causes of animals and gamma that hair, the animal realm, the sphere of afflicted spirits, and other bad destinations are seen. Right? So when you do Ahosandi, uh, 10 type of Ahosandi, then you will go to hell. You will likely to go to hell, right? An animal realm and sphere out the afflicted spirits. I think it's quite clear. This is a, uh, when you look at this soda, the impurity in Buddhism is doing Ahosan, 10 type of Ahosan actions, right? How about uh, wholesome karma? Ten causes of wholesome karma we have. Abstaining from ten causes of wholesome actions, that is avoiding karma, right? Avoiding. And fulfilling virtuous behaviors are called ten causes of wholesome karma. The opposite, right? Do you, you refrain from Ten causes of unwholesome karma, right? That's called ten causes of wholesome karma. So, what is purity in Buddhism? If someone engage in ten causes of wholesome karma, whether or not you perform rites and rituals, you are pure, because those ten causes of karma, wholesome karma, themselves are pure. And beautifying, right? Beautifying. So whether you can, uh, whether you do rice and rage, right? it doesn't matter. If you do whole and karma, you are pure, right? So all you are, even action will be pure. And it is because of that, uh, some people engage in the whole and karma, because of that, they will go to they were realms, and they will go to human realms and other good destinations, right? Other good destinations. So I think that uh, one sotas and the others are linking each other, right? So if you understand this concept, you will, you will be able to read many sotas. So actually, um, especially for lay devotees, I think um, if you know Ten causes of wholesome gamma and ten causes of wholesome gamma. Then you can read so many soda, right? Then I will give you one example. A Majima Nikaya and many many other soda in Gotra Nikaya. And the Buddha said that um, those people uh, uh, who are doing who are doing a wholesome deed with their body, with their speech, with their mind. So they are called foolish people. Don't associate with them, right? Actually, if you differentiate between the wise and the foolish people, very easy. If someone is doing 10 causes of hours and actions, they are foolish. Don't associate with them. For those who are doing 10 causes of wholesome gamma, they are called the wise people. Do associate with them, right? So it is mentioned in uh, Majjhima Nikaya, Pala Panita Soda. So that means they're linking each other, right? If you understand this soda, you understand that soda. So, uh, so uh, the sodas are linking in this way, right? 
Any question? No question, I think it's quite clear, right? Then let's go to another soda. A seed panda. Panda Kapoda soda. It is the name of Hatman. So I give you uh, under the name of prayer. Uh, Sound Nikaya, chapter 47, soda number 6, soda number 6, Asi Pandaka Pota Soda. So actually this soda is connected with uh, Chona Soda as well, right? Chona Soda as well. So one time, when the Buddha was dwelling at Nalanda, one of the headmen, a seat bandaka, under the name of a seat bandaka Boda, approached the Boda and he said that the Brahmin saw the West region, the same Brahmin, right? The same group. The Brahmin saw the West region, those who carry around water pot. Wear garlands of water plants, immerse themselves in water, then the sacred fire. So they says to direct a dead person apart. Dead person apart, right? To go to Brahma Ram. <laughs> to go to heaven, right? To go to heaven. And uh, guide, guide him along and contact him to heaven. And he said that, the Buddha, can you bring all the people in the world to bring to heaven? <laughs> Actually, the, that man, he is very compassionate. So the Brahmins of the West region, so they are uh, trying to bring people upward to heaven. And he is asking to the Buddha, the Buddha, also, the Buddha can you also do that? Right? A very beautiful question. I think it's connected with the. I, I, I will answer later, right? Question. And the Buddha gave uh, the sip two simile, right? The Buddha asked um, the headman if a person engaged in 10 causes or also actions, that person will be reborn in a bad destination. Here, an ocean actions. If someone do an ocean actions, that person will be reborn in a bad destination. If the law come or theory of karma, right? So here, what are the an ocean actions? The same thing. So we have a uh, three type of an ocean actions by body, Four type of unwholesome action by speech and three type of unwholesome action by mind, right? If someone is doing unwholesome actions, so that person will be reborn in a, a bad destination. Prayers and wishes cannot set him to heaven. And the Buddha gave a simile of a huge Buddha. And the Buddha said that then I will give you a simile. Can you tell me what you think, right? And the Buddha said that. <clears throat> so there is a, a very huge, uh, a one person uh, throw the very huge bora into the water, right? So into the water. And many people will come and gather and they will stand on the beach, uh, on the bench or the a uh, water pool, right? And they will make a wish that a deer, a deer, a huge boda come up, right? And come up, don't sink into the water, right? They make a wish, they say prayer, right? They say prayer. And the Buddha said that, uh, uh, can the huge boda will come up? No, cannot. A very huge, right? A very big one. So a very big border, a very big rock 
cannot come out to the water. The reason is too light, uh, too, too weight, right? Too heavy, too heavy. Just like that, if someone do an ocean deed, an ocean actions all the time, then uh, a group of people will come and go around or stand, go around that person and say prayer, may this person go to heaven. May this person go to heaven. They say prayer, they make a wish. Actually, the Buddha said that they cannot do that. The reason is that Bansin have done a lot of hours and deed. So he will go to a bad destination. However you praise, however you make a wish, right? However you say prayers, so that Bansin cannot go to heaven. The reason is he have done a lot of hours and deed, right? Hours and deed. For that reason, the Buddha said that the Bansin who engage in our sand actions, so that person will be reborn in a bad destination, just like he had, right? Just like he had. So prayers or wishes cannot sin into heaven. So that is the law of karma, right? The Buddha is not creating this law, right? The Buddha is not creating this law. He just see it. He just see it, just like uh, somebody, you know, somebody has who who has the eye, right? He can see people uh, he uh, going here and there, just like that. He see uh, how the people after doing Hosan or Hosan deed, he see uh, their destination, right? Their destination. He just retold, right? The next one. If if a person engage in 10 courses of wholesome actions, so that person will be reborn in a good destination. And prayers or wishes cannot send into hell or bad destination, right? Somebody have done a lot of good deed, and people who hate that person will go around him and make a wish that may that person go to hell. May that person go to hell, right? Make a wish because they hate that person, right? And the Buddha said that it is a just like giving a simile or a pot of ghee or a pot of uh, oil, right? And the Buddha said that somebody will bring a pot of ghee underneath the water and he break the pot, right? He break the pot. Uh, all the pieces of a pot will go down underneath the water and the ghee will come up, right? The ghee will come up. And a group of people will gather, assemble there, if they, they make a wish, they say prayer, dear ghee, send down into the water. <laughs> Don't come back, send down into the water. Cannot do that, right? Just say in prayer, just making wish. The ghee will not go down, it will come up. Just like that, however you say prayer, however you cast to that person, and he will go to heaven, he will go to a good destination, right? Just like a heaven, just like a human realms, right? I think if we look at this soda, it's quite clear that however we pray, right? However we say prayer, so they will not help you if you are doing hours and actions, right? You may, if you say prayer, you may accumulate some good deed, but the person you pray for will not go to heaven. So beings are all now their own camp, right? For those who have done hours and deed, go, uh, go downward, right? They will go downward. For those who have done who send it will go up. That is the law of camp, right? So therefore, I give the law of camp. So now I will answer the question, uh, how we see rice and rituals um, and the funeral of the wake, right? So actually, um, 
for that reason, uh, one of the scholars said that um, the big issue for human beings is regarding with the dead body. Some people, uh, we can differentiate between east and west by looking at the, uh, the, the how do you say, the, uh, how do you say, the tradition or custom of how we treat to the dead body. But in the west, they bury in the ground. Now in the east, they will burn the body. Actually, I very often said that uh, uh, most people in the west, uh, they are believer of the God. They are afraid uh, that their body are cremated. The reason is they believe that there is a soul in their body. So when the God came, came down into the wall, and they were raised up, and they were get judgment, right? Judgment. So if their body is cremated, their soul also cremated. For that reason, so they practice bury, right? Bury in the ground. But in Singapore, you cannot do that. <laughs> no space, right? No exception. So you have to be, your body have to be cremated. But in the East, especially uh, Buddhist, not only Buddhist, but also other religions, and Hinduism as well, so we, we can cremate our body, right? Just for knowledge, just for knowledge. Actually, I will, I will come to the questions. So what, um, so what is my opinion regarding with the rising rituals at the funeral and the wake, right? So I will, I will talk about Buddhist funeral, right? Especially we have a lot of rising rituals. So when, uh, when we are celebrating funeral and the wake, a lot of flowers, uh, actually, uh, having a lot of flowers, we, we, we decorate uh, flowers and a lot of beautiful things, right? Beautiful things. I think it's good. It's good. So we are happy to see that. And some people offer the food, believing that uh, that person can be able to eat, right? It's also okay. Not an issue. And... Uh, as a Buddhist, we go there and chant, right? We recite uh, a, lot of, a lot of chanting, right? We do a lot of chanting. So if we look at this soda, uh, the prayer soda, right? You might think that uh, people looking at why we are chanting, what we are chanting, right? People may think that we are saying prayer. And we are making wish for the dead person to go to heaven. Some people might think like this. According to Buddhism, it is not so. So when you look at uh, the chantings that we do in the, in the wake, so most of them are recollection of triple gems and recollection of the nature of death. And then uh, the recollection of uh, the nature of impurity of that body. So we're trying to meditate uh, uh, the nature of death. We're trying to meditate the nature of impurity of the dead body. So in this way, we are accumulating meditated good deed. And we're trying to share that good deed for the departed person. If departed depart person is living around, around uh, near, near, nearby, uh, he can rejoice, he or she can rejoice, share our merit, right? So that is the purpose of uh, Buddhist funeral, Buddhist funeral. So actually, uh, the other rites and rituals are not important, right? Other rites and rituals are not important. You can do anything, but as a devout Theravada Buddhist, I think you must believe that uh, we are chanting. We are not saying prayer. We are chanting to, uh, uh, to, ref uh, to reflect the nature of that body, the nature of death. 
we call it metanasati, right? Uh, we are chanting to recollect uh, the impurity, uh, the impurity, the nature impure, the body. So in this way, we are meditating. So after accumulating good deed, we share the merit. A very simple way, right? Very simple, not elaborated. So the rest is up to you. You can elaborate, right? So uh, the main point is, we do good deed and we share the merit. That is main thing, right? That is main thing. And uh, as a Buddhist, the rites and rituals are not important, right? But as a human beings, so we need to pay back our gratitude to the dead person, right? For that reason, we decorate and we spend a lot of money on that. Uh, many scholars will say that we're trying to ease our mind by spending a lot of money, right? It is, of course, it is a logic in. It is logic in. Even as a Buddhist man. So I believe I, I, I believe is simplicity, right? But even a Buddhist man. So when my mother died, I, uh, I do not, uh, I will not deter or I do not say anything not to elaborate, right? It is depends on the family, right? If they want to elaborate, it's okay, right? It's okay. Yeah, I think okay. it's also for the businessman. <laughs> okay. He comes and tell you what to do. The more you do, the more he earns. He earns money. money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, for the um, funeral director, they will do that, right? Because at the time, the deceit family, they were listening whatever they say. Yes. <laughs> yes. They will pull out money from them, right? There's a very logic here. But here, I just share how we believe rising rituals regarding with the death funeral, right? We do good deed, then we share the merit. For me, individually, uh, I prefer sitting meditation and just sit down quietly, and meditate about maybe uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, then after that, share the merit. That will be more meaningful instead of chanting. And we will chant a little bit, but we will meditate, right? So any method you can meditate. Sorry? Because you are one day. So <laughs> you chant, your mother, will she receive a no, no, better? No, no, please uh, use the microphone. Chanting, no, it's okay. So, sorry, yeah, I say. Email, see? When you chant, will your mother get better? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Suppose I go my mother's funeral, then I chant. Maybe my mother is listening nearby, but as he has attachment to her son. He may not rejoice. <laughs> but it depends, right? It depends. Uh, even uh, without a man, you can perform rites and uh, funeral. It doesn't matter. But of course, uh, people believe that man has a special power, right? But of course, they do have because uh, they, they are trained, right? Uh, to control their bodily, verbal, and mental action, right? But anyway, without a man, you can perform funeral and wake. The most important thing is to share the merit, right? To share the merit. Okay. Time, uh, okay. I read the book. Yeah. Well, I read about it. It's chanting. Mm. I'm reading the English. Mm. I think this so-called chanting mm. is not so much for the death. It's more for the life. Okay. It's more for the life rather than the death. Can you can you repeat the question? I went okay. to this chanting session. Okay. Uh, somebody's uh, <coughs> in the MVDF mm. uh, exco member that that passed away. I read the chanting book mm. while others are chanting. I'm reading the English content. Everybody should actually read this book and understand that it's <coughs> not. We are not chanting for the death. You're right, you're right. We are actually mm. chanting for the life. Mm. We are telling the people who are alive, their children, their relatives, that life is impermanent, everything is, yeah. will go away. Yeah. All these things is not meant for the death. 
Yeah. Definitely, we are not chanting that he will go to heaven. Please send him to heaven. Please, you know. We definitely this. If you read the book, then you will understand. Yes, yes. That we are not doing it for the death. We are doing it for the people who is still alive. Therefore, But all in Pali. Mm. That's the problem. <laughs> Nobody understands. <laughs> Only when you But don't any, chant and read anyway, the English. Anyway, anyway, uh, we go there with a big group. And we chant, even though uh, many of them may not understand Pali, but they anyway they accumulate uh, a merit, right? A good deed. But of course, as you said that, uh, so if you look at all the chantings, I think you will understand this. Not 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 for the dead person. We trying to recollect the nature of death, the nature of impurity and impermanence, etc. Right? By doing so, we are meditating. So by meditating, then we accumulate good deed. Then we share that good deed to the dead person for the dead person. So that is main, right? That is main thing. Another thing is, um, but here, if we share the merit, it the dead person rejoices. In other words, if the dead person feel very happy. So his life will be transformed. His life will be changed, right? Because of emotional feeling. So if a d e s c i p l e s i n see that many people came, including Bandis, many people came and recite or chant um, for him or for her, they were very happy, right? It create a good. h o s e n h o s e n h o s e n mental feeling, right? So that feeling or that uh, elation will transform their life. So that is according to Tiravara, right? But of course, if we look at all the chanting, it is meant for people, meant for us, right? Meant for us. For that reason, uh, individually for me, I prefer not to chant a lot. But I prefer to meditate quietly. So it will benefit uh, both for the uh, for the how to say the participant as well as the d i s c i p l e s in t i n g Question? You have a question? Um, Bhante, I was just thinking that you know all this discussion about rites and rituals in funerals. Okay. Um, we are looking at it from um, the Theravadian point of view, the religious yeah, yeah. point of view. Mm. Um, but if you look at it from the point of view of the family mm. left behind, yeah. the grieving family, yeah. the the rituals and the chanting give a form of very powerful closure yeah. for them. Yes, so course. psychologically, you know, from that perspective, trying to give a more balanced point of view, yeah. um, it is very useful and it's actually quite necessary for them for the closure that it gives. Yes, yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Then mm. another point that just struck me. Um, it's not really a question, l a You know, but just a, a point that struck me is that you know the Tibetans have this concept of um, sky barrier. Sky barrier. Oh, yes, okay, okay. yes. I thought that was very interesting. I don't know much mm. about the rites and rituals uh, of the sky barrier, but I have seen videos, and they're very powerful um, videos where the dead body is brought up to the mountain, yeah. and then the body is actually hacked. To pieces, yeah. um, and they believe that um, the body—I think it doesn't have a soul or whatever—but um, you know, but that's how they dispose of the body. Yeah. So then, um, but it's a very practical way. Yeah, um, I agree. In very rugged, you know, and right? Is by Tibetans. Tibetans, yeah. yes. Mm. So um, uh, it's a very practical way of disposing of. A dead body dead that body. honestly has no use yes. in a very rugged place yeah. by very by people who are economically very poor. So in that sense, I can see that I can imagine l I may mm. be wrong, but I can imagine that the rites and rituals for the Tibetan families will play a very important part because they're sending the families to the heaven. You see, so. But I think uh, it is a. I was. Uh, it's hard to say. The beautiful. Beautiful culture. <laughs> of course, as a Tibetan, they believe that um, 
by disposing dead body for the for the bat, just like the vultures, the the bat will come and eat dead body. But they believe I, I think that is a, a Buddhist concept. Very uh, it is I think it is the original from Buddhist concept. As we all know that when we die, our dead body is useless because we uh, we no longer belong to that dead body. So, based on that concept, and the Tibetan people, so when somebody died, they will throw the dead body and they will hack pieces, right? So in this way, uh, the, the bark, just like it barches and crawls, so they will come and eat. It is a very a delicious banquet for them. <laughs> So in this way, they believe that they accumulate good deed, right? Then I think, um, I think, in my point of view, I think it is too extreme, I think. <laughs> too extreme, so I think. Uh, but who do the hacking? <laughs> <laughs> who do the hacking? <laughs> I mean, if uh, you, anybody who volunteer to hack, uh, I think they have a funeral diet. Funer 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 hmm. I also saw the video. Uh, In the morning that uh. we kill, where uh, have you gone to the market in the morning that the butcher actually mm -hmm. cut the cut the pig up for to sell to you, and you know how many times he has to sharpen his knife mm -hmm. in order to finish cutting the whole carcass. Now we are dealing with a human now. You know how many times the butcher have to polish his axe or sharpen his axe to cut it into pieces for the bird. Mm. Isn't it a troublesome? Isn't it making the one who make the cutting a mental burden? Uh, I when I die, I don't want to give people burden, or I don't video. want somebody to mm. make the cutting for Actually, me. Actually, uh, well, you, you, what you mean is the cutting is not good, right? Uh, if that what do you mean? That is the portion. Yes, who is going to do it? And the one who do it will accumulate what mental factor? Then I Not think what that, uh, it de no, I mean it depends on the individual, his volition or motivation. I will give you an uh, example. You know, uh, the one who used the knife, right, to cut, uh, to cut the uh, human body. The killer will use the knife, right, and motivated by uh, hatred. Then he will accumulate and hold and eat. But the Dauda who used knife, knife, and he trying to uh, save the life of human being by cutting, right? By making operation, he need to use his knife. So for for the Dauda, motivation, divine compassion and loving kindness, right? So it depends on motivation or volition. But still, I but think there's it, a with, with uh, um, Regarding with the uh, uh, Tibetan man, normally, I mean, might be a uh, funeral director, a kind of funeral director, or maybe volunteer. So I think their motivation, they might think that it is a good deed, because doing, they are going to feed uh, animals, right? Animals. So if they are doing such type of motivation, and they will get a good deed, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just another example. For example, uh -huh. if there's a tiger. Okay. If this tiger never eat human flesh before, hmm. he will not make an attempt to attack human being. But one time he has a chance to eat the human flesh. Okay. He will attack the second time, the third time, and the fourth time. Yeah. So it's the same as this butcher. If he haven't chopped up a human before, he have no experience. Therefore, he will not hmm. study. But the second time to chop a human being is very easy. The mm. third time and fourth time will become a habit. Mm. So certain amount of retention, I think, still affect in his mind. You know, here, I think... Although, uh, yeah, there's no karma now. We, we are not we talking about... Call, we cannot call it a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> we can call it a volunteer, right? To... <laughs> not, not murder. He's not, not making murder. Uh, actually, he volunteer to hack 
the dead body so that uh, the animals for animal easy to eat, right? Easy to eat. I think, I think, I think he he he, he do it uh, with a good intention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good motivation. There are also like for example the Muslim. Question? You have a okay? No. The the Muslim has this rich. <laughs> the Muslim okay. also has this ritual about killing the lambs for the haji. Yeah. Yeah. So so before they kill the lamb, they will go through a praying process and so on, so called purifying their intention. And finally, they still kill, right? Hmm. Um, they still kill, but it's sacrificial for the Christian? lamb. It, it is in their Sorry? custom. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is their. So I think culture, I don't think, I think that it is a bad mental factor for them. Yeah, and actually I wanted to say that your um, comparison of the butcher who kills the pig, eh, who cuts up the pig, versus the man who um, uh, chops up, who hacks up the, the, the Tibetan dead body, it's actually very different. Because for the pig, eh, you kill them because you want to eat them, you know. That's different from the corpse, you know, who died a natural mm. death. So yeah, it's very yeah. different. Yeah. So very the, different. the the context is very different. So and we the cannot compare. Culture that no, comes with it. Chart. Yeah, it's very different. Mm. Okay. And the values, yeah, it's very Thank different. Thank you. Uh, question. You want to discuss? Question, discussion, anything? Um, I, I just want to, I just want to add that uh, partly because in the snow mountains, um, if you bury the body, it takes a long time to decompose. So oh. one of the reason is that by feeding. So mm. that is one of the. Uh, quickest way to to yeah for the funeral. That, that's the main motivation why they very do good, very good. Is it uh, behind the scene, right? The reason is uh, it will take for a long time to uh, for the very cold region, right? So that body will take long time. Maybe that that's also one of the reasons, right? So anyway, and uh, anyway, and then uh, but of course, different regions, different way of practice, right? So we have to look at it from a different point of view. Question? Uh, one thing, regarding the Tibetan uh, tradition okay. of that, they believe what you call a bardo state. Oh, yeah. Yes, for a bardo state, you know, uh, they leave the body there until, whatever you call it, the soul or what, departed from the body. So basically, in the bardo state, no, they will not touch the body, they will leave it there. Until a certain period of time, they dispose of the body. When they dispose of the body, it becomes a rupa. The rupa, mm -hmm. there's nothing left. Yeah. So talking about hacking that, basically, it's just a piece of meat. Mm, yeah. And also, the person who does this job, maybe it's my core, uh, his livelihood. Mm -hmm. Just like in criminals being hanged, they're hangmen. Mm. The hangman is also, you know, it's your livelihood. You may say that it's wrong livelihood. Well, it's still possible. Right? So you know, I think that Hacking of the corpse itself, when the soul also had left the body, mm. basically it's just chopping off a meat. Yeah. So then they're not the emotional. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. So I think uh, let's stop our discussion because uh, <laughs> we're a little bit time about our course speech. Yeah? So now I think uh, what we have learned is a, um, we have a 10 type of Aung San Kama. For those who do those ten type of Aung San Kama, so they will go to bad destination. So nobody can afford to make prayer, right? To make them to go to a good destination. So beings are own all their own karma. For those who have done whole San Kama, and they will go to a good destination, right? They will go to a good destination. So, according to Buddhism, both good and bad destinations are not good. So now meditation comes from, right? So we try to meditate to come out to cut the karma, right? By cutting the karma, then we, uh, by cutting the craving, right? Uh, then we attain nibbana, right? So here, the main point here is the law of karma. Right? The law of karma. Good and bad, right? If you do good, and good destination. If you do bad, bad destination. So the prayer and wishes and chanting will not help you. Right? Will not help you. 
Then I went to go to another soda. This is also the law of karma. It's very important concept in Buddhism and all species do. And we believe that we have auspicious occasion, auspicious morning, and auspicious ceremonies like this, right? So we have a lot of rites and rituals, and a lot of traditions, a lot of practices, what we believe is auspicious, right? Normally, when we celebrate a ceremony, we normally say auspicious occasion, right? An auspicious trick, uh, trip like this, right? So we have a lot of rites and rituals, a lot of customs, what we believe in the auspicious, right? Some people may believe that uh, by hearing uh, the sound of a bat, they will believe that today is very lucky. Today is auspicious, right? Then uh, as a Chinese, if you see a red color, right? I, I'm, uh, actually, I'm, uh, recently I know that Chinese, when they, when they offer money in an uh, auspicious occasion, and they use red color and bow, right? So when they offer for an auspicious, right? A set occasions, they will use another color, white color, right? White color, right? This also rise in religious, right? It is, it's not in accordance with Buddhist teachings. But anyway, Buddhism were not against those rise in religious. We can accept it. We are very pleasant. But when we talk about, when you firmly believe that you cannot offer someone in a set occasion with the red color envelope, no, what, uh, envelope right? Envelope, envelope. Then you have only red color envelope and you don't have any other, any other color. How will you do that? You were not using red color one, right? Red color one. But of course, this is a, a rice and rituals or custom, right? Custom. But when we look at uh, Buddhist point of view, it's very simple, very simple. So we don't have those one, right? Especially in Myanmar, uh, so there's no uh, housing business during the Vesa period. So Vesa period will start uh, 27 July. So within three months, so most people will not do business regarding with the selling house or buying house. Actually, those are the custom, right? And belief. We can call it Silabra Brahmasa, right? Silabra Brahmasa. It's not, it's not in according with the Buddhist teaching, right? In according with Buddhist teaching. Actually, there are many things like this, right? There are many things like this. And some people choose a special day for wedding. And some people choose a special, a special and auspicious day for wedding or for uh, taking a trip. And uh, there are many things, right? Normally, as a, uh, as a normal people, they're trying to choose a special day, or special occasion, right? Actually, Sorry? Moving, Moving house. house. One of the uh, Dhamma teacher in our temple, uh, he is going to move a house. And she takes suggestion from me on which day she should move. <laughs> 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 on which day she should move. Then I told her, as you are Dhamma teacher, wherever day, wherever day, which is convenient to you, you can move. <laughs> <laughs> Normally people choose, right? Auspicious days, auspicious date, right? Actually, those are not, uh, those are not in according with Buddhist teachings. And then when you look at this soda, Pobana soda, <coughs> um, soda num, uh, chapter three in Gauta Nikaya, Chapter 3, soda number 155. And you can look at page number 3, 
Page number 371. I think this soda is very important. This soda is very important. The reason is uh, it talks about the Buddhist concept of auspiciousness. In Pali, we call it Sumangala, right? In Pali, we call it Sumangala. So what is auspicious occasion? What is auspicious day? Where is auspicious house? Right? Like this. So if you study this simple, very simple soda, very simple and sharp soda, and you will understand the teachings of the Bora regarding with auspiciousness. Right? I think it is very important to know that this soda is used as a prayer, as a chanting. So normally I think the reason why we use uh, as a prayer is very important. Normally we use Karaniya Meta Soda and Mangala Soda to chant because the teachings in those sodas are very important for a Buddhist. By chanting, we can memorize. So if you can memorize, and we, were, we are reminded, right, to practice teachings of the Buddha from those soda. So the reason why we use Prata is that. So in Bama, we have 11 Prata soda. The last one is this one. Bobana soda, right? So I think there is very important message, right? We choose as a soda is that this soda is very important. Okay? Then uh, I will quote a uh, teaching directly from that soda. And the Buddha said that because those beings who engage in good conduct by body, speech, and mind in the morning, have a good morning. So if you are doing good with your body, you know, refraining from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, and you have a good morning in body. So if you refrain from telling lies, divisive speeches, and hard speeches, and idle chatter, if you can refrain from those uh, uh, four type of verbal action, a good morning. Then if you refrain from three type of mental and wholesome actions, so that will be a good morning. So you don't need to choose on which day. You don't need to choose with who or to where, right? So the most important thing is if you do wholesome deed in the morning, so that will be good morning. And next one, so if you are doing good things by body, speech, and mind in the afternoon, so that will be a good afternoon. It's very beautiful. Then, if you do good deed in the evening, that will be a good evening. So this is a very simple and very important message as a Buddhist, right? As a Buddhist. So, whatever you do, especially when you are doing business, you don't need to choose days, auspicious days, right? So any day will be auspicious when you are doing good deed. So especially when you do business, um, four type of unwholesome verbal actions, right? If you refrain from those verbal actions, a good business, a good day, right? So I think uh, a very important and a very clear message as a Buddhist. You don't need to choose auspiciousness. Trying to do good things, right? With your body, speech, and mind. So that day will be auspiciousness, right? 
I think it's very important. Question? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, there is so much emphasis on Uposatha Day, so okay. I'm just wondering what about this day? Yeah. So actually, uh, we have a Uposatha Day. Normally in, in our temple, we use full moon and new moon day, right? Full moon and new moon day. Normally we have a four Uposatha Day in a month, right? So between full moon and new moon day, we have another eight, right? So the first day of the year is called New Moon Day. Then after eight day, eighth Uposatha Day. Then uh, 50 day is Full Moon Day. Then after Full Moon Day, there will be another eighth, right? So in this way, so we have a four Uposatha Day in Bodhisattva. Actually, Uposatha uh, the meaning of Uposada, later I will, I will explain in detail with my note, right? Uposada, the meaning of Uposada is living close to host and deed. And we choose a special days to focus our, uh, uh, to focus our say to do good deed. Normally in the full moon, new moon day, and people will come to temple and attend puja, right? And some people will stay back, they meditate, and they chant some verses, right? So in this particular day, we do good deed. So that is the meaning of Uposatha. Uposatha means living close to, living close to host and deed, right? So, as a, you, as a lay person, you cannot do Hosandi every day, right? So the other day you may do Hosan actions, but you choose a special day, especially four days a week, four days a month. But here in our time, two days a month, <laughs> last day, right? So we, should, we choose special day, and we come to, we come to Tampa, there's also good day, and we attend puja, and we listen the Dharma talk, right? So these are wholesome actions. So in this particular day, so we are living close to wholesome deed. So that is the purpose of Uposara day, right? So I think this also connected with the auspicious day, right? When you're doing good things, it is auspicious day, right? Auspicious days. But this is a only for this is a especially for um, how to say late devotees, right? This is the first level of auspiciate. Another soda in Majamanikaya, soda number one three one. We ca we have another soda called Bhatika Rata soda. So the name of Bhatika Rata also auspiciate. So in that soda. And the Buddha encouraged to the monks to stay in the present moment. Don't go back to the past. Don't go to the future. Just stay in the present moment. So that me meditate. You meditate. If you meditate, that means if you can stay in the present moment, it is auspiciate. Right? It is auspiciate. It's higher. It is meditation. Right? It is meditation. So this is the, uh, the concept of auspiciousness in Bodhisattva, right? So everything, every Sutta is connected to each other, right? Connected to each other. And I want, I want to show another Sutta. It's called Vasala Sutta, a famous Sutta from Sutta Nipada. So in that Sutta, the Buddha is talking to a Brahmin. One is not an outcast by Mbad. One is not a outcast by birth. No, by birth is one a Brahmin. Actually, in India, Brahmin is supposed to be higher class, right? Higher class. Because a Brahmin believe that they are highest, right? They are higher person. And the Buddha said that by birth, we are not higher person. 
By action, one became an outcast. By action, one became a Brahmin. Because of your action, your karma, if you are doing a whole same karma all the time, you are an outcast. If you are doing whole same karma, you are a Brahmin. You are a higher person, right? So it's not by birth, right? It's not where you come from. It is what you do, right? If you do good things, you are higher person. If you do bad, a bad person, lower person. Actually, this is a Buddhist concept or a path, right? So if we look at all this soda, so the Buddhism judge, you know, based on how, what we do, what you do, right? Based on good and bad, based on good and bad. So if we look at this one, this soda also, we will understand the law of karma, right? The law of karma. And the Buddha normally asks his follower to reflect the idea of ownership for karma. Actually, so sorry that this is a wrong, oh sorry, not wrong, a pena pichawakita pa soda, very long soda. <laughs> a pena me very often. Pichawakita pa me to reflect, right? So we need to reflect, and that soda, the Buddha talk about, we should reflect five things very often. Number one, one day I will die. So we have to replay, right? One day I will die. It's very powerful. One day I will grow old. <laughs> very straightforward, right? One day I will become A. And one day I will, uh, I will die, right? One day I will die. And one day, I have to depart. I have to depart beloved people, one way or another. So when our beloved people will die one day, or we will die one day. So we have to depart with, with our departed people. So if I, uh, it is a, how to say, hard truth, right? It is hard truth. It's truth. One day, we have to depart. And the last one, what the Buddha saw is the ownership of the idea of ownership for camp. I am the owner of my camp. I will be the heir of wherever camp, good or bad, that I do. So we have to reflect the idea of ownership for camp. So now you are handsome, you are beautiful, that's ownership of your camp. Whether you're beautiful or you are ugly, whether you are good looking or a bad, look, a bad looking. So, if you reflect the, the ownership of your karma, there is no conceit or there is no regret or remorse. You just acknowledge, right? The ownership of karma. Whether you are poor or whether you are rich, so it is ownership of your karma. You, you just accept it. Whether you are educated or less educated, whether you are privileged or less privileged, right? So we have to ownership for your camera. So especially not only ourselves but also other as well. We have to reflect the ownership for their camera as well. He or she is promoted because of his own camera, right? He is rich because of his own camera poor because of his own karma, right? So if we have the idea of ownership for karma, there is no jealousy, there is no elation, right? There's no pride. So I think uh, that's very important. So if we look at this, uh, this soda, the importance of karma, right? Importance of karma. We are on our, our own karma. We are creating our own karma. For that reason, the Buddha's, uh, we can say that, uh, sorry. So, 
I connect uh, with the mind handful. <laughs> so uh, we have to think about our own karma, right? Not only ourselves, but also other people, right? Their own karma. They are rich, they are handsome, they are beautiful because of their karma. No point to have jealousy, right? So they are poor, less educated. We can have a compassion, but no ability or something, right? So just like that, if we reflect the ownership of our own karma, we can understand people, right? We can understand people. Otherwise, we will not understand, right? We will be frustrated, right? We will be frustrated. So I think that it's very important to understand the ownership of our own karma. The next one, so as a Buddhist, we should know that uh, a very important teachings of the Buddha, then I give uh, DIY. Do it yourself, right? Because we are owner of our own karma. So if you want to become rich, then you can try. If you are ugly, you can try. Go to Korea and make it <laughs> surgery, right? <laughs> like this. So you can, even you can change your, your, your gender, right? You are mm, gender, right? Gender, right? Like so we are, we are on our own camera, right? We can do. So that's called do it yourself, right? So I mean, this is a very famous part from Dhammapara. The Buddha said that you yourself should make the effect. Right? The Buddha said that, just believe me, I will take care of everything. The Buddha never said that, right? The Buddha is very sincere, very honest. You have to do yourself. The, the target, the Buddhas are the one who only show the way, right? So the Buddha, got, the Buddha has already shown the noble evil path, right? The Buddha just show the path. We have to do ourselves. A very honest religious person. Not like other religious leaders. If you believe me, I will take care of everything. <laughs> it is not logical, right? So for those who want to get a job, just believe me, just pray. I will give you a job, right? I will appoint you as a, uh, I, will, I, 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 will, I, will, I will give you a job, right? It's not logic, eh? You have to do yourself. So uh, I can give you the method, right? When you go to interview, then I can tell you how to, uh, how to do it, right? How to, um, how to meet people and how to answer the question like this. Just show the way. You you will say have to do it, right? So therefore it's very important and very famous part from the Mabra. Tome Kitchen Atapan Akata Rota Tagata. You use to do it. So the Tagata, so the Buddha are just show the way, right? Just show the way. And the very important teachings. So I think uh we can understand by looking at this, uh, so those teachings, now we understand that. So the Buddha is not a creator, right? The Buddha is just a teacher to show the way we have to practice, right? It is hard truth, it is hard truth. Because people, general public believe that, uh, general public, so they, um, they believe uh, somebody will give something, right? Somebody will give something. For that reason, uh, they follow a lot of rites and rituals, right? Rites and rituals. Okay, so uh, we still have another five minutes. Any question? Question? No question? Then let's go a little bit, right? So we have a three bodily actions, right? 
three early, early actions. Number one, destroying life, panadipada, taking what is not given, arinadana, engaging in such a misconduct. Right? So three bodily actions. So th uh, these three are called bodily actions because generally they occur through the door of the body, right? Through the door of the body. So these actions can also be done by speech. You can command your soldiers to kill the other people, right? And also you can uh, um, you can and you can tell you can encourage people and uh, to stay right with your speeches. So in this way, so here orally action me not only uh, killing not only with your body, but also it may be done by speech as well. Even though you do with your speeches, it is considered as a bodily actions, right? Bodily actions. Then I think that uh, we have to go into it. <laughs> so here, this is a, um, what the Buddha taught in the sodas uh, regarding with destroying life, right? So when the Buddha taught destroying life or killing, he will talk about two types, avoiding, to refrain from, and also to practice, right? To practice. So this one is avoidance. Here, someone destroying life, and he is martyrous and bloody-handed, given to blows and violence, merciless to living beings. Here, not only killing, but also blows and violence, right? And merciless to living beings. So these are also a part of killing, right? A part of killing. Then, uh, abstaining from distraction of life. The Buddha said, here, someone has been abandoned distraction of life. Abstain from distraction of life. With the raw and weapon, lay aside. Conscientious and kindly. He dwells compassionate toward all living beings, right? So I think that uh, next week I will go in detail. I think now, I think not enough time to explain, right? So here, do's and don't, right? Do's and don't. Don't do that, and you have to do that, right? So next week, I will go in detail. Now, uh, 9.50, so we have to close our one lesson. Then we will, can you wait for a while? Announcement? Yeah. One announcement, please. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, a gentle reminder, this coming Monday, uh, 16th of July, there's a talk by Bhante Chakapala on uh, monastic life, past and present. Uh, do come here. Starts at 7.30, ends at 9.30. Same location here, venue here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sakya muni pagawa gata kecho paragato bala viriya samangi dansu katan saranata mupemi Ragavi ragamani Dhamma Soka Dhamma Ma Sangata Ma Patikula Marurami Mambagunam Suipata Dhamma Mi Mansaranata Mupemi Yata cha de namah
Chattu su su si su puri sa yu ge su Atta cha po ga la da ma da sa te Sangami man sa ra na ta mu pe mi Satu, satu, satu. Good night, everyone.